Hello there friends and welcome back to another video and today we're talking about living next door to drug dealers. Yes this happened to me actually not that long ago this was in Covid so I um, own a house and next door I own the house next door which I've always rented out to some very very lovely tenants and just before Covid happened I had a young girl wanting to rent for this property and you know she was saying she's in a very difficult time she's on universal credit and um, she needed a chance now to be honest with you sometimes with universal credit you can be absolutely fine they're great tenants and they stay a very very long time and sometimes you can come a cropper this time i came a cropper i'm a little bit of a sucker for a sob story especially with uh, where you know young women are involved and she told me she, it was her and her boyfriend wanted to live there. He had a daughter that lived close by and because they're on universal credit, no one would take them, no one would give them a chance. And she promised me that if I gave her a chance, that she'd be the best tenant uh, I ever had and she wouldn't hear any problems, all the rent would be paid and they're very quiet and they wouldn't you know, cause any mischief. Now, I had a little reservation inside my belly, if I'm being honest with you, but I wasn't actually getting that much interest. And I thought, do you know what? I'm, everyone needs a chance in life. I'm gonna, gi I'm gonna give this girl a chance. So anyway, the day turned up with her moving in and I never met her boyfriend and he turned up and he had tattoos all over his face. And I thought, okay, this isn't a great start, but don't be too judgmental. Maybe he just likes tattoos and um, you know, he's actually not a bad bloke. He's very polite. But that first day, oh my words. So they had the row of a century and I could just sort of feel my house rocking as this house is attached to the side of my house. And um, you know, the potty mouth language that was being used was like horrendous. You definitely wouldn't have had, wouldn't want to have young kids um, you know, living with you with that going on. And I could just feel doors were slamming and I was just, thinking what have I done here but I thought maybe it's teething problems maybe they're settling and it'd be all right now so specifically said no, no smoking I, I hate smoking and uh, they said no absolutely we don't smoke duh, 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 it's absolutely fine and straight away the smell of weed was just floating in as it was quite warm and sunny and I had to shut all my windows and it's 30 degree heat because just drugs are just pouring in from next door and I tried to keep my patience and I said, look, you know, there's no smoking in this property. You told me you didn't smoke. Said, oh, yeah, well, you know, we'll always smoke outside, but they're, they're in now. And I knew it's going to be very difficult to, to get them out. So I thought, well, if they smoke outside, maybe I can sort of tolerate it. But obviously it wasn't ideal because I hate smoking and I'm living next door. I can't open my windows anymore because I'm constantly outside smoking. Anyway, it just went from bad to worse, to be honest with you. And then as COVID then happens, I'm now at home a lot more, sitting in my lounge. And I can see all these young 15, 16, 17 year old youths come round the back of this alley to, to the house next door and coming inside next door's property, my property. And they're in for five minutes out, in for five minutes out, in for five minutes out. And I quickly realized they were dealing drugs inside my house. And obviously wasn't very happy about that. And the only reason I really realized is because it was COVID and my pattern had changed and now I'm sitting at home a lot more than I was before. So the arguments between them were getting worse. You know, I've got all the real sort of awful people from wherever they come from sitting next door in my garden, drugs pouring over, they're laughing, joking. The one saving grace was I was actually still getting the rent because Universal Credit was paying for it. Many times the police were called and, you know, um, the guy next door was arrested because they were beating each other up constantly and then he was getting police order against him but then the next day he'd be back again and then they were all in love again. It was constantly like that. And, you know, obviously people come in back and throwing because they're, they're dealing drugs outside, you know, my property. Uh, they were always extremely nice, extremely respectful to me um, never said anything to me directly because I was already sort of struggling to keep my temper. And then one day they had a massive row and um, she's on the phone saying, you know, I'm going to stab you 
and it was arguing with someone else, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And as soon as I saw the fella, I said, look, you know, I, you, you, your missus has sort of been going off, going up and down the road, saying she's going to stab people. Um, and I've had enough now, basically. So if there's anything else, I'm going to be giving you notice. And I would really recommend, you know, you leave before I have to sort of get rid of you. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry, Rory. Da, da, da. Won't happen again. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of heard it all before. Luckily for me, about a month later, their, their uncle um, apparently had a property that they could move into in Selsey, and they gave me a notice, which was a day in itself, and left the property. Now, the property, unfortunately, absolutely stunk to high heaven of drugs, and I had to replace all the flooring, have the whole thing repainted, and had to like burn candles and put vinegar out to try and sort of soak up the smell of drugs that had sort of seeped into the walls and into the floor. But luckily they had gone. I had my peace and quiet back. And it was amazing how you sort of just get used to a situation. And then when they left, it was just that calm and peace had returned. And then I had a nurse move in with her lovely dog Baxter and didn't hear a word from them so it made me appreciate her and that lovely dog even more so this is a tenants from hell story here this was my own mistake sort of taking a chance and really not listening to my gut 100 percent and just going for the easy option with the tenant and it backfired against me would you have done the same as me and given them a chance or would you have known better and just listened to your gut and waited a few months to get the right tenant and don't listen to the sob story, which I definitely did do on this occasion. Let me know and hope you liked today's short video and we will see you next week. Thanks for watching.